I left my not very well paying, this isn't one of those jobs where it's like, I left my $100,000 a job year, job year, $100,000 a year job to go be hashtag starving artist. No, I left my like somewhat decent paying job. $17 an hour is not a lot, but to just not feel like shit every single day and to pursue what I love to do. I felt like I was being talked down to uh in regards to my questions instead of just being answered and helped um when my ambition was not appreciated anymore and honestly was seen as annoying i guess <laughs> i was anxious to go to work every single day like i dreaded i'd have to go to school and then immediately after i'd go to work so i had no time to do anything else that i wanted and being deprived of like any time to relax or like think about something other than school or work was just driving me insane um and I wasn't sleeping, I was feeling really bad, like it was time for a change. I cried a lot at work too. Since I worked the night shift when everybody left, I would just cry because I hated being there. I began to resent the work, I re began to resent the people, the company, and I was not being as productive anymore because I was like, well, if they're gonna talk to me this way and not help me, then what's the point of like continuing to try to learn or try in general because I'm just being a burden here because I don't wanna do it anymore and I'm not even doing it well because no one's continuing to teach me. That that leads into the other point is that I felt under nurtured and undervalued and it killed my spirit. Like I, I went in there so eager to like learn about tech and learn about all this stuff and I just like when you're continuously put down and made to feel stupid and like you can't do it and when your questions are not being answered, your spirit for it, your excitement starts to die because it's like I don't know, maybe I just wasn't as good as I thought, or maybe I'm a burden or what have you, but like I just, it, I, I fell off. This one is more personal. There are a lot of therapists who will tell you like, don't let your office friendships be your only friendships. Like that's a good way to destroy your social life because uh, work relationships shouldn't be friendships anyway. But the thing is, because I went to only school and work, I never had time to go out and do anything else to meet other people. And I don't really live in an area where like meeting people is a normal thing to do. It's a small town, all things considered, or like a small city, big town, like, but there's not really people to meet. And the kind of people that I get along with are not your average everyday people out on the street. So I mean, it, like I get along with the artistic people and the weirdos and you know, the, the like, the, what do you call them? Like, like, like the ugly ducklings of the group or, or what have you, like the people, the odd ones out. And everybody here is so like focused on fitting in, in one way or another, especially the youth that nobody wants to be different and nobody's really into what I'm into. It's a very concentrated group of people and finding those people is kind of hard. I'm just not, I don't have a tribe. And so every, when you spend like 70 to 80 hours of your week, 80 hours, yeah, well actually, yeah, 70 hours. I was working between like 50, 60, 50, uh, 70 hours a week, depending. But when you spend so much time at work and it's like, uh, I meant to say like 70, 80% of your life, you know, those people do matter. And I didn't have any connections with them. So I felt very out of place at work and there was no, reason for me to go like yeah money but it's just like I don't know like I'm not happy and my co-workers don't even make me happy so why am I here I stopped feeling motivated to move up that like, ties in with the loss of motivation and uh, lack of like you know the loss of ambition because I didn't like anybody at the company nobody talked to me anyway and I started to hate the job I felt like I couldn't do it anyway so I was I lost all ambition to move up I was like I don't I don't want to be here now why would I want to be here as an executive or, or be here as a uh uh manager or, or whatever this one was uh yeah i was sorry i'm looking at my notes i was fed up with being overworked and underpaid because i was being overworked to death I i'm talking like could barely keep my eyes open standing up and i was making 17 dollars an hour which this day and age is it's not it's still not enough sorry especially for one person who's like a single a single unmarried person who pays for their own apartment their own car everything like no help from their parents. Yeah, it's not enough. <laughs> this is the icing on the cake that makes everybody's eyebrows raise, but basically our boss left a dead bird on our desk and that pissed me off. Um, Cause I, one, that's fucked up. Two, it's not funny. <laughs> Three, <clears throat> I'm very, very much a germaphobe. I don't care how that thing died. It is a dead animal on my desk where I eat. And it wasn't only my desk. 
It was a shared desk between all the people in my rank. Gross, and I'm still reeling about it. It didn't personally happen to me, but the thought of knowing that like this dead animal so jokingly was put on our desk, it's like, okay, all right. <laughs> that, that, was, that was one of the straws that broke the camel's back that week. <laughs> These are more personal reasons. I was yearning for freedom again so much that I'm like in my soul, like in my spirit, I was like, something's wrong. Uh, I need to get out of here because I feel so trapped and I just, uh, it felt like a dead end. It felt like a dead end road. My entire body started hurting, like, like everything. I mean, I was having constant headaches, constant tension headaches, um, just tight all the time and like it was the same feeling as whenever i worked at chick-fil-a but like different in its own way but like the same internal feeling of my body is just like i don't want to be here i'm stressed out i don't feel safe i don't feel uplifted i feel closed in trapped and incapable <laughs> right my performance started slipping because i was so stressed and exhausted all the time that i didn't have a shit to give anymore first of all but even the days where I did still try to give a shit, I couldn't because I was so tired. I hate school, right? And I'm back in college, but my whole life I hated school. I never liked school. I never wanted to go back to school until now where I was trying to go back to school to get out of these jobs that I hate so that I could at least make more money doing something I can tolerate. But I started liking school more than work, which has never happened before. I've dreaded school. I was like, I don't want to go back to school. I want to just find a good job that can sustain me that I like to do and, and what have you. But it, it was getting to the point where I'm like, I'm better at school now with my like fully developed brain and I like it more. <laughs> also, college is a lot more self-managed, but you know, when you work a job, especially one in an office like the, where, the one I worked, you don't get to self-manage. You don't get to dictate your schedule. We didn't even get a lunch break. Like you have to just fit lunch in wherever you could. And half the time, people were always calling. So you were stuck with food in your mouth, trying to like, like you, I'd never, I ate once a day and I never, I couldn't even freaking enjoy it. <laughs> this is one that uh, I had my eyes open to, but security is an illusion. They were getting ready to fire me anyway. I was given disciplinary action that I didn't even know. Like basically you get like one, two, three strikes, you're out kind of thing there. Didn't know that either. Um, nobody told me anything. There's a lot of shit nobody told me at that company that I just kind of learned by failing and then getting disciplined. But the first disciplinary action that I got was um, a talking to by my boss. However, it was essentially, well, not my boss, more like my manager, but they were like, oh, is everything okay? What's going on? Why is your performance looking like, are you all right? I thought they actually cared about me and were doing like a heart to heart. And I was like, I, like I cried. I was like, yeah, like this is what's going on. I'm sorry, I'm just so tired, blah, blah, blah. And uh, the second confrontation that we had, I had to sign a paper showing all my mistakes that I, I didn't even know were like mistakes. Um, they just put them on a paper and were like, read through them. No description, like like a description, but nothing of what it was actually like the initial problem and what I did. It's just what I did. It's like, hey, you did that wrong. Okay. I, 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 what, you know, what, what, when was this? Where, what, what problem? What, what did I do in regards to what problem? Like, there was no backup information. It was just like, here's, here's the ticket number. Here's what you did wrong. I hereby understand that this is my second disciplinary action. And I was like, oh. So the heart to heart that we had was disciplinary action. First of all, that's fucked up. And second of all, I didn't even know. I didn't know that that was considered a disciplinary meeting. So that pissed me off. And this is the last one. This is a short video, but I was ready for God's best. And I was ready to commit to my art business, to committing to streaming full time and YouTube and all this other stuff, content creation. And even if it doesn't work out, I don't care. I, I want to have at least tried and took the jump. Maybe get like a part-time job just to pay the bills, but like focus on my content creation and my art because my soul felt so dead. And it made me realize like, I'm like, I, I just want to create. Like, that's what I'm meant to do. I'm not meant to put up with these dumb ass jobs that like I get talked down to anyway. Like I can walk in there with like the, the biggest smile on my face the desire to learn, friendly to everybody, and it doesn't matter. They will still fire you on the spot, hire someone else, and just not care about you. So 
why even stay? And so I was like, you know, look, I know it's gonna be hard. I know it's going to be a lot of work. They all like, I, I, I watched this YouTuber and he was like, oh, you're gonna trade the nine to five for working 24 seven. But you know what? I would rather be like slightly stressed out 24 seven about something that I actually love to do than stressed out for eight or more hours a day, depending on the shift. We were on call, by the way, 24 seven for one week out of out of the month so either way <laughs> then being like majorly stressed out to the point of like i'm getting sick and i can't sleep eight hours out of my day or more depending on whatever i worked so yeah it's hard um you know i have to be thinking about work my business my art my my videos i have to be thinking about that 24 7 what am i gonna do what do people want to see when am i gonna fit this into my schedule but i would much rather do that and live off of less than go to do something i hate every single day now i'm not telling you to quit your job don't take this from don't don't take that from this i'm just talking about why i left mine and it was a good position for me to be in all things considered with my past but I'm just not like, and I don't mean this is like a weird, oh, I'm, I'm like the next Van Gogh. I just have to make that painting and, 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 and I'm set. <laughs> oh, I make a million dollars. Like, no, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm special. I'm just saying like, I am not like other people in the sense that, and I mean this in both a positive and negative way because I envy normal people a lot because normal people can go do things they hate and put up with it and make it through. I cannot. Normal people can tolerate the bullshit for 40 years and do some stuff in between and retire at 60 or 65 and like it. I cannot do that. I don't care if I never retire as long as I am doing what I love and that is art, performing, creating, what have you. I don't think people were really meant to retire anyway in the traditional American sense. Like, I think God made us to work and, excuse me, as long as you're able-bodied, I, I think you should be doing some kind of work, whether it's a talent, whether it's a skill, whether it's like helping people, helping animals, whatever, like whatever you do, you should be working. As long as your brain and your cognitive functions and your neurological functions and you can at least use your hands to do something, you should be working. That is not a jab at disabled people. There are some people who can not work. This is not about them. This is about people like you and me who can't maybe necessarily like tolerate, you know, nine to five or uh, whatever labor jobs. But even though art is not a job to most people, it, it's, it's still work. It's a gift that God gave you. He said, he made Tom and Tom is a uh, laborer he does construction and what have you. That's Tom's work. That's what he's good at. That's what he should be doing. Or what, maybe he doesn't even like it that much, but he's like, yeah, I can get by with it. That's Tom. And then you got Julie, right? Julie is an artist. And God said, okay, you're an artist. He touched Julie. And he said, that's the talent and the work that I have put inside you is the work of an artist. What is the work of an artist? Create, to shape, to mold to inspire, to encourage, to express. I'm gonna cry. That is the job. That is the job of an artist. The job of an artist is not to come home and cry over their sketch pad because they had a terrible day working fast food or <laughs> working at an office doing something they hate or don't agree with, selling cars that they don't even believe in or they think is too overpriced. That is not our job. Our job as artists is to be creative is to create and unfortunately the world doesn't value that as much as i really think it should because without art we have nothing art is the one thing that separates man from beast do dogs and cats and horses and cows and alligators and frogs and fish do they think about well what oh what a lovely sunset i'd love to capture that specific yellow my god put it onto a painting and wow it came out even better than i thought no they don't do that <laughs> animals are focused on survival and unfortunately our society is built around survival but artists aren't meant to survive artists are meant to create the construction workers the office workers the accountants the ceos the baristas whoever 
even if you're good at it, that's a survival job. I mean, some of them can be like creative, you know, like put your love into your coffee that you make as a barista or if you're a chef, but, but even so I find food to be an art. Like, I don't think food should be I don't think we should be paying for food in the first place. I mean, like, like, well, not, in, not in like, you know, food, food everywhere should be free, but it's just like, it, I think food should be a hundred times more accessible than it is. Like, yeah, pay somebody for the work of getting the ingredients together and making it in a way you couldn't, but it's still an art form. You have to know how to cook. It's a skill. It's an art form. It's something you have to spend years like perfecting if you want Michelin star dishes, right? Like there's a reason why chefs who have those kind of qualifications are so coveted because it's an art that they spent years tasting and combining and putting together. I sound like freaking Remy from Ratatouille, but like it's, I feel like I'm kind of losing, losing track here. But my point is, I am an artist and I can do other things. I am good at other things, but nothing fulfills me the way that having freedom and putting what I want to put out, out there. And the thing is, if people like it or not, it doesn't matter because at least I'm creating for me. When I'm working a job, I have to cater to everybody's needs. And not that I don't like helping people or making people happy, but they're never happy anyway. It doesn't matter how good of a job I do because they're not happy anyway. And then I could draw whatever the hell I want and I go, well, at least I'm creating art that means something to me and that when I die, a piece of me that I care about will still be here. And if you wanna, you wanna uh, thumbs down it or whatever, whatever. Cause I don't have a boss above me going, why'd they thumb down this picture? Are you not trying hard enough? This is becoming more of a rant, <laughs> but I really hope that like <sighs> inspired somebody out there who also feels this way, or at least gave you someone to relate to. Honestly, I quit because I couldn't take it anymore. I tried so hard to save up a little bit of money, make a plan, wait it out. You know what I mean? Like just, I tried to fight for it. And then I tried to fight to stay in it long enough to set myself up comfortably. And literally the week that I started planning that, it all just went downhill and it crashed. And I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. I can't, I'm going insane and I am exhausted. So like I said, I'm not telling you to quit your job to pursue art full time. If you can, if you want to, if you can set up your, set yourself up, like store up like six months of emergency funds and all that good stuff. Cause that's what I was trying to do, but I didn't have enough time because the bomb exploded before I could defuse it or at least up my timer. So if you're thinking about it, I see you, I hear you. Um, I just wanna encourage you like keep working on it. Um, and if you're like me, where you either got fired before your, your plan to be fulfilled or you quit before your brain exploded <laughs> with anger at the system and uh, these terrible jobs, um, and then I'm right here with you. Um, you can follow me on my art account uh, I'll put it down here somewhere on Blue Sky. Um, I have some shops that I'm opening as well. Like I'm doing like uh, apparel designs. <laughs> like it's kind of like the the avenue to go, right? But um, I also produce like digital assets and stuff like that. And you guys can follow me here, uh, and you'll see my updates. And we can be a community and support each other, share each other's stuff, um, mention each other, what have you. Anything to get each other exposure. Uh, yeah. So, because I 100% in believing, 100% in believing, I 100% believe in supporting other artists um, and being there to help each other. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm the Silent Sheepdog, and that is why I quit my job and decided to pursue art full time. I'm gonna be making a video eventually about like my processes and my schedule and like how I um, keep track of everything how I uh, sort tasks out and all that good stuff. So look forward to that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Asan Cheap Dog. See you guys in the next one.